have a very interesting reading for you today to, to look at. We're going to look at it together. This is a medium that has been doing videos on TikTok and other places as well. I guess she's been publishing them on YouTube. And I'm trying to think of how I met her. Well, she was doing some videos that were, um, she was saying that some psychics are frauds. Okay. So that's how I got interested. She was doing something about seatbelt psychic. I think is how I, I met her on TikTok. And she is a true believer in her powers. And what made her unusual, and this is why I think this video is going to be really interesting, this analysis, is that she understands cold reading. She says she understands how that works and she understands how hot reading works. And she says, absolutely, she does none of that. She's the real thing. She says she's real. And I think this is pretty common for people who are um, in the mediumship business that they really do believe that they are helping people and that they are doing um readings and they don't think they're cold reading now i can't get into her head i have no idea if she really really believes uh, but i think it's a, a fascinating look to look at one of her videos so she had uh we've interacted a few times we were thinking of doing like a live on here on youtube and her uh, she had posted on TikTok that she was thinking of doing this with this skeptic, Susan Gerbic. And her people on TikTok were like, oh, that'd be great. That'd be really interesting. And then while we were thinking about doing that, we were going to meet and talk about some things. Um, she went and made a TikTok about me and about my boyfriend, Mark Edward, uh, because she had read the book, um, Psychic Blues, Conf Confessions of a Conflicted Medium, which is my boyfriend's um, book on his years working in the psychic business she also read the book psychic mafia which is great i'm so glad she read those books and it's really unusual to see a psychic medium dive into the world of skepticism like she did and i was like this is great this is this woman could become a wonderful ally um you know kind of bridge the gap of understanding and you know maybe she'll come out of this hopefully with um, some skepticism and know how she managed to get into it and you know I, I i still think that's possible but um i guess not now at least not right now so on facebook we were in a discussion it's kind of a long story and i'm not going to get into that right here but she was giving us evidence on Facebook of how psychic mediums are, have helped police and have investigated crimes and been of help for the police. And she gave us a few links, like the Reader's Digest 21 videos or 21 uh, stories of uh, occurrences where a psychic medium has helped the police. And I've done at least one video on it. Um, I looked into it and there's no, there's no there there. It's pretty bad, these stories. And then when she was called on that and said, well, you said these this was evidence and there's no evidence here. And she said, oh, well, I'm not going to do your work for you. I looked into it. I didn't look into it. That's what she says. I didn't really look into it. I just Googled it and that's what I found. There's a lot more links out there. Okay. You're not going to, you're just going to present this as your, as your evidence and then you're going to walk away. And then when we find fault with it, and the reasons why we find fault with it, like the detailed reasons of why this is not accurate, you're just going to throw up your hands and say, I'm out of here, okay? Because you will never agree. She's calling me a narcissist. And, you know, it was just not pretty. Anyway, so in that discussion, she decided that she was going to present some of the people who are questioning her with her best evidence of the best reading she's done. And so I asked her, this is your best, best evidence. And she says, it's the best evidence I have that is public. Or then she's like, well, it's good evidence. It's pretty good evidence. And I'll show you the, the, the screenshot because you know, I screenshot everything um, of her, her saying that it was good evidence and what she's, here it is. I will show you this so that we're, oops. So that we're all clear on the same path. 
Now, here's what she says. Um, M.A. Lemons, that's the name she's using on Facebook. What is your best video recording that you've done? And she says it's not public because it was such a private reading. But in my YouTube, the one with Matan and Ryan is pretty good. And I said, okay, if that's your best outside the private one, she says, well, I mean, best is subjective. It's a good one. Certainly a ton of stuff I couldn't just have guessed. And then I said, okay, so you're presenting this for me to evaluate. Now, and if I go through it in detail, you're not going to get upset if I find problems with it or I'm if I'm not impressed. You won't say that there are better readings I should have found or that I'm a narcissist or moving goalposts or I would never be happy in that I'm just ignoring good evidence. Okay. So that's what I said to her. I have that in writing. She was okay with it. And she told me, go ahead and evaluate it. Knock yourself out. So when I evaluated the reading, it's seven minutes. No, it's 30 something minutes. So I'm not going to go through the whole darn thing. It's just too much for you guys to, and for me. So it's 30 something minutes. I, I could put the video link if I think I still have it because I have the download now um, to work off. Um, I'll see if I can find the link and I'll put it in the in the notes uh, description below. And then when I talked to her today, because she appeared somewhere else and she was trying to say that she's she's definitely the real deal, even if there are other psychics that are fake. Um, I said, you didn't even respond to me because I went and now analyzed her video and I told her what I thought was going on. And she never answered. She never addressed that. So here's a screenshot of our conversation today. And she says, I said, if you're not interested in discussing the video you gave me to watch, then what will I do with all those notes I took? Should I do a video of what I discovered? She says, you can do whatever you want. It's public info. I'll do a critique of the critique. We are in different planets, basically. You will never believe in the afterlife, and I will never believe I'm, I don't know what the word is, due to attentive listening. We're at the proverbial impasse. And I said, okay, I'd love to have you do a critique of my critique. So I suppose you guys watch for a video, probably on TikTok, where she's going to um, analyze this video that I'm doing right now. And okay, that's fine with me. I'm I'm up for that. Um, so pay attention. I, maybe I'll post it somewhere. So you know, subscribe. I would really would appreciate that. If you find this kind of thing interesting, what we do here on this channel is we break down readings, audio, video, um, I suppose written, we could do those too. If we, if we had, if anybody had anything of interest, they wanted me to evaluate that was written. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to understand mediumship because I really do believe that this is, there's more to it than what skeptics and believers tend to say that it's just you know there's no way the person could have known this about me or skeptics often will say something like well it's just a bunch of you know they're just throwing stuff out there you know or they research you i think there's a lot more going on than that and this video that i'm going to show you parts of i think it's a fabulous example of what's really going on because there's so much psychology involved. And um, I don't think we've really gone into it in detail before. And so I hope you guys like this longer format. You know, if you don't, you can go to TikTok, 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 and you can watch those, you know, one minute videos. But this is a little more detail because we're looking at it in, um, you know, really looking and thinking about it. And I'm really open to listening to what you guys have to say. So please leave me comments in uh, below. I'm happy to read your comments and answer as best I can. So keep in mind what is there and what is missing. And I hope I can get through this fairly quick. I'm not so sure because it took me, it's a 30 minute reading. When I went and analyzed it, you know, with notes, I was going back and forth and re-listening to things. It took me maybe three hours. So I'm not subjecting anybody to that at all, but I'm going to do my best. Okay, so this is um, a medium who is, um, the reading was done in May of 2022. And it's really not important who the person is. 
Um, I'm going to call him the sitter, but it's going to be obvious who he is because you're going to see the video. But it is a man who is living in California and um, the medium, she knows, I don't know if she knows, has done a reading for him before. She never answered me when I asked that question. I know she does a reading for him after, but this is like a paid reading where, you know, you, you, um, you pay us a certain amount of money and you get a half an hour reading from somebody and, and that's what, what's going on. And they're doing it over zoom, obviously. Okay. What, what the sitter does first is he says, I want to be in touch with somebody specifically. Nobody's been able to be in touch with this person ever before. And I've had lots of readings done and this is really all I want. And it's a person, his name is Ryan. Okay. Cause this, the medium says, What's the person's name? So I can make sure I'm getting the right person. And and um, the sitter says it's Ryan. That's who I want to be in touch with. That's all I want. You know, if you if you if you can't get it, that's fine because uh, nobody else has been able to be really specific. But um, Lord, these notes are detailed. So. First off, and I'm going to, I think I'm going to skip this part just because for time, the first thing that happens after about a minute in, um, the mediums connects immediately to a male and that male is, they're saying he's very different from you, very different personality. And he's somebody with a surfer look with long hair. And then the sitter is saying, well, that could be me. And she says, no, no, no. Uh, immediately starts shortening the hair. She says, it's somebody with like a lot with like long hair, longish hair. And she's going like this. She goes, no, it's not that long. It's more, it's getting short. You know, it's shorter. It's more like this, like, like here, you know, and that he would go like this with his, with his, with his hair all the time. And, and so on. It, it feels like she thinks she's connecting to Ryan. Okay. So the sitter says, no, that's not Ryan. That's Chris, who died as a teenager, who fell out of a truck, the back of a truck. So now um, the medium starts moving. She says, oh, oh, okay. Well, that's a description of a young man who was a joker, who is funny, outgoing, and he's a dumbass. And, and, and now Chris, who's this person who's, now been identified as Chris is saying, Oh no, no, I'm going to pull this other guy in here. He's, he's grabbing his hand and he's pulling him into the reading saying, this reading is for you, not for me. And so, so Chris starts backing off and trying to pull somebody named Ryan forward. Okay. So now this is kind of typical for the rest of the reading. You'll see a lot of this when, when um, this, it, there's not a hit then the medium, you know, backs off like, oh yeah, you're right. That's not the right, whatever. Here's the right thing. And kind of, you'll see a lot of that happening. And it's it's really interesting. So like she says, he, he is a dumbass. Well, the sitter just told her that the guy fell out of the back of a truck and died at, as a teenager so that does sound like somebody who's has risky behavior who's you know acting stupid and uh gets himself killed by falling out of the back of a truck and apparently this chris person comes around a lot that's what that's what the sitter says so um you know i'm thinking in my mind i can't know what this medium is actually thinking if she is intentionally seeing things that sh and or if she's pretending to see things or if she feel if she is getting some kind of feeling that she thinks but you know when somebody says i'm seeing it right like they say i see this person he looks like this he's he's making this motion he has these mannerisms he's pulling the other person forward I don't know. That just seems really strange. If you're, if you are, if you are really, are you really seeing somebody? I mean, are you really doing that? I don't know. 
that gets into a whole area of psychology I'm not ready to go to. But I find it odd that that this person who, who comes forward, Chris, doesn't identify himself as Chris. He doesn't say, oh, I know you're here for Ryan, but I'm Chris and I was a friend of the sitters when he was a teenager and I'm a dumbass and I, I like to just like, like a what is it called when you you photobomb something i like to photobomb readings so again it's it's kind of one of those things that like she got it wrong so therefore she turns track and now it's it's right oh yeah yeah you're right i wasn't i wasn't trying to get a hold of this person it's this other guy yeah you're right he is here okay so let me pull up this video so that you guys can start watching this with me. Okay, I'm going to show you this. Um, I am going to show you this little bit about the hair because I think it's pretty typical. We'll see this throughout the whole reading uh, about how she says something and then whenever it's wrong, she immediately comes back with something else that, oh, no, no, that's not what I actually meant. It was this. Because they see somebody so completely different from you. Would you understand someone that almost has the surfer look and has the kind of the longish hair that he kind of does this kind of mannerisms? Would you understand that about this person? Um, long hair? I mean, that sounds like you're describing me, but... Uh, no, not, not long as yours. L like, I say I, long for a guy, right? So like it probably would have only like come to here-ish and probably kind of long like mine right now, but he kind of had this mannerism where he would kind of like flick the the hair almost like away from oh, his face. Oh shit, oh shit, I know. Oh fuck, yeah, I know who this is. You can't, yes, I know who this is. This fucker, okay. Okay, so she does say longish, whatever that means, but um, she does course correct. And so that that's always suspicious when they do that because it makes you feel like they're they're intentionally doing that. Um, I don't want you to pay a lot of attention to the sitter at this point because there's a lot going on with the sitter and the medium is not really looking at the sitter and doesn't feel like they're even feeding off of them as much as you would if you were really cold reading in an aggressive way. So let's just put that off for the moment what his reactions are because he he is um it becomes very clear to me by the end of this recording what's going on with him so let's let's move on to another little section now ryan's going to be coming through and i want you to hear how he's described okay hold on really someone's arm to like come into the room and talk to me and this person okay this person well let's see who it is um i have uh like lift like i want to say thin but but i don't want to say thin um you know how people are sometimes um they move almost like a dancer but they're but they're on the thin they're not skinny there's no anorexia yeah, here it's, but it's called move. slim thick it's called slim thick yeah oh like, it is yeah we call it <laughs> slim thick okay. yeah yeah so kind of tall i do see like maybe between uh, my idea of tall is anything over six foot, right? So I'm seeing between like six, six to six one, possibly. Would you understand that about this person? Yep. Okay. So I'm seeing um, just these enormous like deer eyes, like these eyes are just ridiculous. Like anyone and everyone who ever saw these eyeballs would be like, are you human? Yeah. Yeah. Would you, you would understand that? Yep. Uh, beautiful eyelashes, beautiful deep. Yes deep the the i want to say almost like an amber chocolatey yep. color yep okay beautiful yep. beautiful eyes um and the bone structure also he's kind of pointing out his bone structure and he's kind of saying do you see this jawline yep <laughs> uh so very much um a little bit quiet a little bit private but when when it came to it he was a bit of a performer would you understand that yep yeah. So I wouldn't use the term introvert as much as I would use the term. <laughs> I wasn't an introvert. I just didn't I share exactly. myself. Yeah. I wouldn't share myself with everyone because not everyone deserves me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So he's thin, but not thin. 
He's thick, but not thick, thin, but not thin. Enormous deer eyes, beautiful eyelashes, amber chocolate colored eyes. So not brown, not amber. I mean, bone structure. He's quiet, but he's not quiet. He's outgoing, but he's he isn't. He's not exactly an introvert, but he can be a performer. Um, it sounds like she's playing, she she's trying to have it both ways, right? So she's throwing out a lot of things and he's agreeing to it all. And then she's, she's like this or not, this or that, that or this. Okay, what's missing? She doesn't say what color is his eyes? What color are his eyes? Uh, we still don't know what color his eyes are. How tall is he? You know, she's like anywhere from six, one, six to six, six. Why doesn't he just tell her how tall he is? He's over six foot. He has enormous deer eyes. Okay, that's an opinion, apparently. But um, <laughs> so um, it, it just was, it's, this is cold reading. All right. This is what I'm trying to say. This is cold reading where you're throwing out things that are ambiguous and then you're waiting to see what the person responds, and then you change, you course correct to agree to whatever it is that they just said. So that's cold reading because you're, she's not saying, okay, I have Ryan here. His last name is Jones or whatever his last, she never says his full name. I mean, why doesn't she say his name? If this is Ryan, Ryan, what's your name? What's your last name? Can you give us your full name? Oh, and she doesn't even think to ask him. She goes on and talks about like, well, he's sort of thick, but he's not thick. He's tall, but he's anywhere from six to six and a half feet. He's got eyes that are either brown or amber or somewhere in between. He has bone structure. I don't know what that means. So everybody has bone structure, I assume, of some sort. And he's quiet, but he's not quiet. And... He's an introvert, but not an introvert because sometimes he's a performer. It's just like one of those Barnum statements, okay? It's not really getting to the meat of it. If you're in contact with the man, she says she sees him. She's in contact with him. What is his name? What is it? Tell us. That's evidence of a hot reading if you if you had it. But I, no, I'm only kidding. She's not a hot reading at all, okay? Not at all hot reading, but it would be evidence if she wasn't hot reading that if she was to say, oh, his name is Ryan. His last name is this. This is his birthday. Here's his social security number. <laughs> mm -mm, nothing, nothing, nothing ever happens. Him. He felt, especially in school, he felt too feminine for the most part. And a lot of times he would come home and he would complain about this and his mother would say, but look at this. And then I see male composers. I see male pianists. I see male ballerina dancers. Yes. I see, yeah. I don't know what they're called. I think they're called ballet yeah, dancers. Just called ballet. I, <laughs> he just corrected me. He's like, clearly. Um, so his mom was yeah. extremely integral in his confidence in his, oh, um, yeah, yeah. Yes. The, per oh. the, per oh, fuck. the yeah. person who he turned out to be. And then there would have also been a male influence in his life. Was he a ballet dancer? I keep seeing ballet. No, what? Oh, God. Oh, okay. Don't give me too much, but. I know. I'm just, okay. Um, no, he wasn't a ballet dancer, but he moved very mu musically. And oh. he loved music. But oh. he was a musician like I was. Okay. But okay. One, yeah, but yes. Okay. And um, so his, because he's and the, showing and the thing with his mom and his the mom, the thing you're on a hundred percent, his mom, so his adoptive mom was in a wheelchair, which you which is kind of giving, but it's it's relevant to this, is that she thought her son was like could do no wrong, was perfect. Okay. <laughs> right. So we still don't know Ryan's name other than Ryan. Uh, he had a mother and he had a male influence in his life. Who has no male influence in their lives. Um, 
And she keeps talking a lot about music and ballet and and so on. And then she finally says, was he a ballet dancer? And he's like, no, he's not a ballet dancer. We find out later he's he's a biologist. Um, throughout the reading, she before this, she really emphasizes that, you know, it, he's in one of the artistic endeavors, you know, drama, music, um, ballet, dance and so on. Now, again, he does say, yeah, he moved like a ballerina. He moved gracefully. And that might very well have been true. But as I said, at the moment, don't really pay attention to what this um, sitter is saying. Because it's going to be relevant in a minute. Okay. So what the medium has completely missed is that he's adopted that his mother's in a wheelchair and we don't know what the mother's name is. So Ryan hasn't said his mother's name, a last name, where they lived, anything like that yet, and will not. It's always just left, let's not talk about that kind of thing because she doesn't know. She can't know. If you're cold reading, you can't know. So she didn't pick up on the wheelchair. She didn't pick up on adoption. And then just to save some time here a little bit, then she's going to start talking about how he has a male influence. And she's playing around with this is there was somebody in junior high school or high school, um, a drama class, a teacher, you know, something to do with a teacher. And that uh, this teacher was one of the first openly gay people that he's able to see that is openly gay and that she, he could emulate. So then the sitter's like, well, I don't think there is a teacher. It must be, you must be talking about me, the sitter, myself. She's like, oh yeah, okay. And then she says, were you in drama also? And he's like, well, yeah, he kind of struggles to kind of make it fit. And then, then it, he, she mentions, well, you guys were friends before you were partners. And he's like, yes. Okay, so that's a hit, but that's kind of like, yeah, well. That's not saying a lot. Um, so it's somewhere in here, it starts shifting to being um, a love interest. Ryan is a love interest of the sitter, not like a coworker or a cousin or a brother or anything like that. And I guess that becomes more and more clear as they talk about the mother and the adoption and so on. So somewhere in there, remember, the medium doesn't really have any information. So she's just kind of playing it as she goes, you know, uh, where, where it leads. Um, they're in class together. They're in drama class together, apparently. Uh, it sort of sounds like they're in a drama class in high school together. But what ends up coming up is that it turns out that Ryan's eight years older. So they were never in school together. Were they... And... <laughs> And she had said, like, it was junior high or high school that he had a strong male influence that was the first openly gay person that he was able to emulate. And then the sitter, as he'll do the entire reading, he'll claim it to be something else. He'll say to the medium, you're right. And then repeat something back that is completely not what she just said. And then she'll say, act like that was correct and it's like wait a minute i just watched the same thing you did i i'm looking at this and i'll go back and forth and listen to the video several times and what the medium says and then what the sitter hears are different things and the sitter will say no this is what actually happened and and but you're absolutely right this is what happened and it's not what she just said so um she says that the teacher was a high influence on him in drama class. And now he's saying, I must have been the teacher, even though the guy's eight years older. I taught him. Mm -hmm. um, and she didn't really see that coming. She was really surprised. Okay, so she seizes on the idea that now Ryan, she was seizing on the idea that Ryan was a drama teacher instead of the student that like they were students because now she's learned there's eight years difference and she starts like oh well he must have been the drama teacher okay so um then she gets into 
wearing surfing fins on his feet. And I guess they went out and surfed or, you know, did stuff in the water. And so she says, I see surfing things in, in, you know, fins, you know, for swimming. Okay, as I listen to this again, she's just now introducing herself to him. Um, she says, you know, I usually introduce myself earlier on, but I forgot. So this is her first reading with this with this um, sitter. Oh, and it was really funny because Chris, and I kid you not, pulling this guy into this room, like a, almost against his will. And he yep. keeps, he's showing me currently these weird uh, fins on his feet. Those fins that you go swimming in the ocean with, or um, thank you. The, does this make sense? Those big ass fins that you would have fixed. Yeah, yes. Um, yeah. And, he, and yeah. he's laughing about it. And he was like, um, it was kind of like, pulling him into this room was kind of like pulling you into the water with these fins or something like that. And he's showing me, do you, were, were you not a, was there a fear of swimming in the ocean that you used to have? He did. He did. He, he was, ter he was terrified of water. He was not a good swimmer where I was like, I was a, like a swimmer all my life. And so I would oh. pull him into, like, I would grab him with these little flippy thingies and I would push him into pools and fuck with him like that all the time. And oh my god and one time in tahoe okay so that's a miss um she says i'm seeing these fins and then i'm and he pulled you into the water and that you were and you're afraid of water right you know and he's like no i've been swimming all my life he was terrified of water so that's a miss it's a huge miss but you know, it just, it's another cold reading kind of thing where you say, you know, I'm seeing water and I'm seeing guys playing in the water and somebody's wearing a bathing suit, you know, and he's got these fins on. You are in California. So, and he does have that kind of look to himself. And she did already mention earlier in that, um, like a surfer type and stuff like that. So it's obviously the, the person she's reading for is very fit and is probably the type that would be swimming in the water. He just kind of has that look about him and it's a, it's a good guess. Um, so then now the sitter is talking about how he used to be a real jerk to his, to Ryan. He used to play tricks on him and that um, jump out at him or whatever. And now then the sitter, I mean, the medium starts saying, yeah, he, you, you, <laughs> uh, Ryan is saying you were a jerk to him and you used to, you, you used to think it was funny and, and so on. <sighs> So then it goes to where they're talking about the mother a little bit. Again, her name is never mentioned. And uh, Ryan, that's the guy who's dead. He misses California. No kidding. And that um, she goes back to her soul drama class is a shared memory. The sitter reacts to a memory, but nothing is shared. It's just platitudes. In other words, you know, oh, he's looking after you. Okay. He's bringing you donuts. And why are you wearing work boots? So I was really perplexed at a minute there and I had to fast for you to rewind it and go, what, what do you mean you're wearing work boots? Well, apparently Ryan is telling her about work boots and the sitter tells a story about donuts and how he used to bring donuts like at four in the morning. He brought to the house and he left the donuts out there and you know because he's going to go to work and he left him donuts and that and that he was teasing him about work boots and that um the the medium says he wants to know why you're wearing work boots whenever you never wear you need to ever do any work and he's like ah ha ha that's a true story you know and he starts telling a story about how he was with ryan and ryan was saying you know ryan was a botanist and he used to work um you know wearing work boots and that um the sitter wears fashionable work boots you know and that they should um you know he was being teased by it but again what this is is it's just kind of like you throw out a something and and then the sitter makes it into something right because if he's bringing up something about donuts well if 
if you are getting that reading, something about donuts, how many of you people out there wouldn't have something to say about that? I mean, we all have donuts somewhere in our lives that we would be able to, to bring back and say, yeah, well, I have this story about donuts. And oh, yeah, I used to. I used to work in a donut place. I sure did. I worked in a donut place in high school and I could tell lots of stories about donuts. And I remember before I used to go to church, we'd always have donuts. And I remember this and I remember bringing my kids out for donuts. There's so many stories that connect to donuts that if a medium throws out, I'm seeing something about donuts. If you're motivated to hear what you want to hear and you think you're connecting to a dead person, you're going to find a story that correlates to the donuts. If in a rare circumstance, you don't have something connects to donuts or work boots, then you skip it and you just move on. So, you know, the part about the work boots and what the medium says, that's, that's okay. I mean, that's sort of a, sort of a hit, I guess. I mean, put it this way, on a scale of one to 10, as far as throwing out a cold read of a specific hit, it's maybe like a four. I mean, it seems really specific what she said, but it's still, we don't know anything else. What I thought was interesting is I thought when she says, why are you wearing work boots? I thought Ryan was looking at him. I mean, she's in contact with him right now. She is. She says she's in contact with him right now. She can see him. So why doesn't she just ask Ryan Ryan, what is he wearing right now? Is he wearing the work boots? And then Ryan can say, no, he's just barefoot right now. Or no, he's just walking around in socks right now. Or yes, he has his work boots on. And then the sitter can pick up his foot and show. That seems pretty, that would be pretty amazing, right? Well, except I think he's probably walking around the house barefooted or in socks. I mean, it's just kind of how people are, but. Okay, another really good one here. Hold on. Yeah, yes, yeah. I love, I love this. And then he- Oh then God. He, he, he said it in a very sweet, loving way, but he had a way of saying things like that to you yeah. that you just accepted because you were like, I wouldn't let anybody else in my entire life say that to me. And here you are. Yeah, yes. That's how you, yeah. I don't feel I feel like he may have had a sibling but it wasn't a sibling I almost feel like it, I want to say a foster kid or a cousin does any of that make sense um yeah yes yes okay so I almost feel like he had a sibling but it wasn't a sibling a foster kid or a cousin does that make sense well she knows he's adopted now So that could be a half brother or whatever. I don't know. It just feels like you're just throwing everything out there. Can we, can we know the guy's name? What, what's the person's name that feels like a cousin or feels like a sibling that is on the sibling? What's her, what's her name? We never get the name. Why don't you just tell us his name, Ryan? Who is, who is this person? That's kind of obvious. And he, and it also goes back into the booth. A little bit, but that it meant something to you. Yep. And then yeah. he's bringing up donuts. Like if, did, does, that, does that mean something? Sorry guys, I'm getting myself confused here. <laughs> Hold on. He also brought up, he brought up the, I can't tell if this is the name Rose or an actual Rose. And then he brought up daffodils. Would you happen to know if his mother loves daffodils? No, it's, um, ugh. okay. Um, the daffodils and the Rose both attain, that all goes to me. It's not about his mother. Mm. It's about the physical rose because um, he was a hobotanist. Oh, and, wow. Um, yeah, he was a, a skilled hobotanist. 
and he and it also goes back into the boots because I used to always wear I wear boots like like work boots or like you know for like fashion but he would wear boots to work in the garden and um when he lived with my parents and I in this house he specially crossbred a daffodil for me wow and I just it. got chills oh yeah my God. and he planted it in this kind of thing in front of my window oh. as like as an anniversary gift oh my god i'm fucking my the heaters literally pointed at me and i'm oh. freezing because of the yeah. chills so i've heard this a bunch of times already with a lot of different mediums i don't know why it is with the rose but it is a common common thing I, I remember Suzanne Northrup uh, was one of the ones that I I wrote about this and I've heard it from a lot of others they say I'm getting a rose it could be a name it could be a an actual physical rose what does this mean and what it comes down to is it could be a rose a person a cat dog a tattoo a physical rose i mean if, if it's a cold reading trope and so this this medium throws it out there a rose it could be a rose it could be a name like that okay the daffodils that's a little unusual so that's very good she throws out a daffodil but she associates it with his mom um and it's not his mom the sitter here as he does throughout the whole thing everything he interprets it to mean something different than what she said and he says yes daffodils do mean something because he was a botanist which she didn't pick up on she thought he was a dancer or a, a drama teacher or you know in drama somewhere an actor or something a musician or something um, we find out he's a botanist and that he crossbred a daffodil for me and it's under his window so that's really interesting but it had nothing to do with the mother um, and then he talks about the donuts again, about how, how these leave him at the house. And he talks about his shoes and how um, work boots reply are associated not with him, but it, with with Ryan working. And then he's wearing his fashionable boots. So I don't know if somebody said, what's this about work boots that you're wearing? And you don't really do much work, do you? And I don't know. I'm not really there. I'm not impressed. Okay. Another thing she misses, she misses that Ryan lived in the house that he's currently in right now with the mother and father. So he was, Ryan was living in that house with his parents, the sitter's parents. And at no time does the medium pick up on that. And I would think that would be obvious because you would think that if she's really talking to Ryan, not only, only would Ryan have a lot more specifics than throwing out things like work boots and, and donuts, and daffodils but he would say something like you know that's the room I used to I, you know I used to sit there and look out the window in the room that you're in right now Ryan would be um saying more things about that room and that house because we can see it on the video then there's a story about how they go to a fish market in San Francisco and somebody's throwing fish and uh well they do live in california or they live in the sacramento area which is really kind of close to san francisco about an hour or so it's a typical place people would go to if you lived in in the sacramento area you would go to san francisco i mean i've gone there and there's a there's a market where they throw fish around i know that sounds really weird but that's something they do at a lot of fish markets there's some in seattle that do the same thing and it would be really funny and it would be a memory. Okay, well, that's that's actually fairly good. And then she makes statements that fit the memory. Then she talks about how he has a great sense of humor, but he didn't show it to anyone. And then he starts oversharing again, because this is what he's doing. He's overshares and he starts talking about how um, the things he wants to hear. Um, Let's see if I can find this one specific thing. And I think it's a good example. Let me look for it really quick. 
which is about 45 minutes, Wow, 30 minutes, depending. On so track. you would understand a really nice, sweet shared memory. I'm seeing the fish market in San Fran and like the <laughs> smell <laughs> and like the stupidity of the people yes. and somebody yes. throwing fish at someone else. And yes. you were both like, that's literally the most disgusting thing we've ever seen in our lives. <laughs> oh, would you understand? And you were yes. like people yes. watching and just like- yeah, All the time. Like All that is so fucking disgusting. What are they doing? Like, do they go oh. home like this? You guys were yeah. just oh, God. cracking and you were cracking each other up. Like you would do shock and awe. Like the next comment was like, I wonder if he kisses his wife like that. Do you think he has one? <laughs> Oh my God, I can't believe you just said that. Oh, I can't, I'm chills, chills. Oh my God. He's, that's that... exactly, oh my God. So we were in the, in the fish market in San Francisco and this woman had this giant fish and it was, and the smell of that place was rancid. And I, we were like trying to hold our breath and run through that fish market as fast as we could. And this woman starts like making kind of like Julia Child kissing faces at this fish. And he said those exact lines. And I laughed so hard. I peed my pants in public. Hey, did you get that? Because this is what I'm talking about throughout the whole thing is that she makes a statement he says, oh my gosh, that is so accurate. And she's laughing and she's saying, yeah, I've got chills and that is so accurate. And then he responds with something that is completely different from what she just said. And they both acknowledge that she was right. Now, I've seen this several times now, and that is not what she said. She said, well, a fish market, they go through a fish market and it smells really bad and they're trying to get through it and they're laughing at the people there. Okay, that's fine, but that's a typical thing that that could be said of pretty much anybody um nobody really wants to stay at the fish market and sit there and smell fish right well she says that ryan's giving you a memory about a man who's who who's kissing his wife like that and that you think he has a wife and he's kissing the fish you know it's fish and the kissing and the sitter says oh yes the that was the, you know, I can't believe you said that. And he literally said just that, that there was this woman in the market and she was making this Julia Child thing, kisses faces, and it was gross. Those are not the same statements, right? So if Ryan's saying that a, who is he kissing him, kissing his wife like he's kissing that fish, and then here's this woman, and then the sitter says, that's exactly right. He said exactly that, you know, that's exactly what he said. And there was a woman there and she was making kissing faces and she looked like Julia Child. That's not exactly the same, not even, that's not close. Those are different situations, but they're saying it like it is the same situation. It's, I know I'm sounding really picky here. But those are different things. It sounds like somebody who badly wants to connect to this person that the medium's giving. It sounds like he's very badly wanting to connect. And he's just re-listening to what she's saying. He's doing motivated listening. That's what I say. Call it. And he's reformatting it to fit, even though that isn't what she just said. And there's several of the cases of this. If this is the only time, I would say, okay, but this has been several times. Let's let's keep on. I know it's getting along. Okay, looking through my notes again here. Another thing that happens. So the sitter goes back to the sibling that is not a sibling. And no names are given still and never are given. And the sitter says, okay, there was a foster sitter, sister, who had a child and the baby daddy ran away and Ryan became the father figure to the children, which is completely different than what the medium says. She says there, I felt like there was a sibling that was not a sibling, like a cousin or a foster child. And he says, yes, there was a, um, a foster sister who had children and the baby daddy ran away and he became a father figure to the children. That's a different thing even though it's a foster sister. Okay, so 
or whatever, but it's still not enough. He's saying it's a sister, a foster sister, foster sibling, still no names given. And so, so the sitter's trying to equate that he, Ryan was thinking like he was adopting these children. And they go on to talk about how they were thinking about adopting these children. Right. And that they were, and then she says, you guys didn't get married, correct? Which is an odd thing to say whenever it's obvious that, you know, <laughs> they're a couple, but they didn't get married. Um, then she comes up with this thing about sparkly lights at some kind of ceremony and there's sparkly drinks and the sitter is, sitter starts reacting. She says, it's just like a romance, you know, like a, uh, one of those um, rom ro romantic comedies and that it's just the two of you in there that's very romantic and life is, you know, and there's a sparkly uh, drinks kind of ceremony. It's just like everybody else is gone. There might be people there, but they're not really there. And so as I'm explaining this to you, are you getting a vision of something? Because as I'm listening to it, I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, like they're at a wedding, they're at, they're having some, or they're having a, a celebration, a, an anniversary celebration, and there's champagne and there's, and, um, you know, there's little lights on the table or something like that. Well, that's what I'm thinking too. But no, it turns out that, um, the sitter starts explaining that they were sitting in Ryan's car and the light was turned on when they talked about marriage. Okay. It could be that a light on in the car when they were sitting in a car. Okay. And then on their first date, Ryan proposed in a coffee shop at the table. And then the lights and the trees in the downtown area at Christmas time, they both love Christmas. So there's a picture of them on their first date and they're at a coffee shop having, you know, their first date and the guy proposes to him. Okay. I guess they've been, they'd been friends before. So maybe that's not too weird. And then they go out and they're walking in the street and it's Christmas time and there's Christmas lights and they take a picture, a selfie and there's Christmas lights behind him. And that must be what she's referring to. So again, he's doing motivated listening. He's listening and changing the story to make it fit. She didn't mention Christmas time. She didn't remember the, she didn't mention a first date. She didn't mention a coffee shop. She didn't mention a car with a light on. She didn't mention um, taking a picture at outside when you're walking around and there's Christmas tree lights out on the outside. All she said is that there were sparkly lights, some kind of celebra celebration and sparkly drinks and it's like a romantic comedy and there's, it's just like, it's just the two of them, even though there might be other people around, it feels like it's just the two of us. And he totally interprets it completely differently. And the two of them, if you would ask him, and I suppose she's going to do a, a response video to this, are going to say that that was a hit because they both agree that that was a hit. You know, she's getting tingles and everything over it. And it, that's not a hit. That's not, that's not what she said. That's not at all what she said. And, and what he said wasn't. Okay. I'm telling you, it's a long reading. A lot in here. Okay. So then the sitter starts talking about how, um, you remember we we're back into the drama class and that the the supposedly in a class together and so on. Well, now the sitter has remembered that the sitter was in Fiddler on the Roof and doing some choreographing. So I guess he's a dancer. And Ryan and the sitter used to go over lines together. And that is what he probably she meant by them being in a drama class together and that there was um, a, some, so they weren't in a drama class together, but she spent an awful lot of time on that at the beginning about the, about the drama class and who was the teacher of what, but now, now it makes sense in his mind 
that where we're at with this. Okay. Here's, here's something very interesting because now this is a cold reading. She doesn't know how he died. Um, she's, she's going to say that Ryan doesn't want to talk about it. Which is interesting that Ryan doesn't want to talk about it because she can't talk about it because she doesn't know how Ryan died. But there's a lot of strenuous situations with her and our my relationship with them at the time. And it kind of kind of just like cut off and we didn't talk about mm. what happened because it's a very sensitive subject for both of us. So I'm not exactly seeing how he's passing and he doesn't necessarily like to talk about it because it makes me sad. I know. Sad. I know. Uh, I know. Ugh, but yeah. it's interesting. Well, it makes him sad too, but it makes you sad and he doesn't like to see you sad. And he would have told, oh, that's the, that's all the laughter. He didn't, he didn't deal well with sadness and he didn't deal well with melancholy. He always wanted to, um, he would have given someone a, a smile on the street, even though he was a little standoffish, he would have given someone a smile on the street just to kind of cheer them up, if that makes sense. He would give, he would, oh God, you're going to like make me cry today. Okay. Okay. So that's very convenient that Ryan does not want to talk about his passing because it makes him sad and it makes the other person sad. Very convenient because she can't know. She doesn't know how he died. Nobody's told her. Nobody's even hinted at death. Doesn't, we don't know if it's an accident. We don't know if suicide. We don't know if it's drugs. We don't know if it was uh, an illness. We don't know what it was. We have no idea what it was. And she doesn't know. And so therefore, Ryan doesn't want to talk about it. Ryan doesn't want to talk about it. Um, there's, there are history buffs. She mentions, she changes the subject to they're both history buffs. And we find out that uh, the sitter is a history buff because he's been working on his family history because he's also adopted. Then we learn about, um, there being, uh, Ryan being a obsessed with state fairs, you know, like those old state fairs in 1904, St. Louis, Missouri, state fair and he does all these drawings and he's just really amazing draw uh, artist and um and and so he says the sitter says is he mad that i got rid of the drawings because they would have been really valuable and the medium thinks about it a second and medium says honey i could never be mad at you for anything which is the answer that the guy wanted to hear Okay. And they start talking about the drawings and how they can get the drawings. And uh, the medium says, well, you know, the woman that you gave it to Ryan says she'd still be real. She would be really open to getting those drawings back. If you were to tell her that it was a mistake that you gave them away accidentally. Then Ryan, then the sitter says, well, I don't actually know who the woman is. I didn't give them to her. I sold them in a consignment store which is kind of different. Why didn't Ryan mention that? <laughs> so Ryan seems to know who the, who the woman is who bought, who bought the, um, or got the, the drawings from. And why doesn't Ryan tell us her name and how to get a hold of her? But no, that isn't mentioned because she's unnamed and so on. Um, I guess there was a, bunch of problems with um, the sitter and Ryan um, towards the end of his life because the sitter is not included in any of the funeral arrangements. There's a lot of estrangement between the family and, and so on. And they didn't include him in the preparations and the media makes a bunch of excuses for them saying, oh, well, you know, there's reasons and that they didn't want you to be, you know, they didn't share you in the funeral arrangements with you and so on. Then she starts talking about a wooden cutting board and that they cook together. Well, yeah, they were in a long relationship. I think they probably did cook together and a wooden cutting board. Then no more names, no names are mentioned or anything like that. And then it comes out that, um, 
one of them would, oh, somebody would jump out from behind the door and they would scream or they would freeze and they would surprise them and that they, oh, and then now it's starting to come out again as we're getting close to the, to the end of what I, my notes is that um, the sitter has a lot of pain from what's going on there. There's a lot of pain that he's dealing with. As you can see, he's had multiple readings and trying to get a hold of this guy. So he's been very upset by this. This is, this is a man in grief um, who is reaching out, trying to find medium after medium after medium, who's going to connect him with his, this man that he, he had been in love with. But there was a lot of problems with the relationship, especially during the end. Um, that apparently Ryan was very cruel to to the sitter and he's asking you know for some sort of um acknowledgement of that or apologies of that or something and there's a lot of pain and then there's this um yeah he's still a bit stoic and he's still I don't think we lose our personality I think we no. are who we are you know what I mean yeah um does he understand that i part of me will never forgive him for some of the things that he put me through i accept them but i but i still i still have a lot of pain around it and i don't know how to get past it he shows me you um physically writing down a letter and i feel like you've already done this though um I hated this. I hated this. Yep. But then at the bottom, you say, but I released this and I released this. And I, I feel like you wrote the letter, but you didn't do the second part. You didn't say, I released this back to you because this was your energy and not mine. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And then you burn that letter and you have I some did. sort of a little ritual. And then, um, cause I do see that you have, I wouldn't call it an, a straight up altar, but I do see that you have some things that you keep in a special place. Oh yeah. Oh, nice. Um, he almost wants you to leave that letter there for a little bit to kind of, to, to, um, build the energy if you would, yeah. uh, about what you're releasing back to him. And he says, um, number one, he says, I'm sorry. Number two, he says, I will accept my own energy back for the things I did gladly. And number three, he says, um, how is he saying that? He's presenting, he's presenting you with an alternate view of how you'll never put up with that bullshit again. Absolutely. He's presenting it almost, which i'm asking him like that's kind of victim shaming and he says i'm trying that's why i'm trying to i don't think it's i understand exactly what he's saying is he okay yeah i don't think it's victim shaming i think it's um yeah it's it's like self-worth because I, mm. I always told myself i would never ever be with someone who would put me through the, that shit ever ever again ever and he knows that that's absolutely a hundred percent what i that's okay. not victim shaming at, at, at all it's it's, okay. it's And yeah. then he apologizes again. I mean, yeah, yeah. He says there were things that were that were part of the human experience that. <sighs> he isn't showing me what he did. He is absolutely not showing. One because he's private. Two because he says it's none of my business. He said it in a nice way. I know what he's um, saying. And three, because he doesn't really want for you to relive it. And he thinks that when you do relive it, you just kind of put another little, you kind of almost put another little sword through your own heart and you need to get to the point where you're not yeah. reliving something. Um, yeah. But he also said there was a lot of times and there were a lot of instances where he was stuck in this, you know, human form where kind of pleasure and, and uh, putting his energy in the wrong places He's saying this very carefully. Um, were were impulses that he mm -hmm. didn't necessarily know how to. Um, he's kind of showing me. I don't know if you guys ever would have went to like a drag place, but he's showing me like mm -hmm. a theater, and he's showing me someone in drag. And then he mm -hmm. did he he did he wasn't a drag no, 
but but that's what he's showing me as far as like um yep. some of these impulses and some of these people and these personalities that he would have been drawn to certain people for reasons that sometimes even he didn't understand and that he would have had regret even then does that make sense mm -hmm. yep yeah you well, got someone it, someone else is probably about to come in here because i think yeah. i gave her the same link but um sure. no worries thank you um, absolutely yeah, I... okay so he never does explain why he died um somewhere in there i must have skipped it the sitter really wants to know he has questions about the death and the medium says he don't want to talk about it that's the end of that because he doesn't want to talk about it and as you see here here in that little segment i just played for you she alludes to it again that he doesn't want to he, it's none of her business and that um, he doesn't want to talk about it because it's only going to make him sad and then she just gives him a lot of platitudes about well you know there was some energy and there was this and there was things going on when i was in the human form and and so on and it's you know it just strikes you when you're listening to this she is not a therapist she is not a grief counselor she has no training other than her mediumship as far as i know um, in this this trying to offer therapy to a man who's still obviously grieving over the death of, of this man who hurt him and he's looking for answers he's has questions about the death those are never going to get answered because obviously the psychic doesn't have the answer because they're not really talking to anybody and um nothing specific the only thing that i would say out of this entire reading that i thought was good really good well no not really good it was good is that she said that he wrote a letter to um, ryan and then burned it and then kept a little shrine to him and then he turns the camera and there's a little it points to an area where he has a little shrine of stuff apparently i don't know jewelry or something we don't ever see but some area on top of the dresser and then she says you should he wants you to keep the letter longer which i'm not sure what that means whenever he burned it but keep it longer for it to gain energy or something like that so i'm not even sure that that's all that great because i think it's common i mean she's probably done a lot of readings you know hundreds and hundreds of readings probably over time and i think it's probably common if you have somebody who has died and you don't feel like you were able to resolve things with them once they died i think it's common-ish you guys can tell me in the comments if you think this is common that you would write a letter to them and then probably burn it like it's as if it goes into the air into the ether you know and um it, it's therapeutic kind of a way of like i'm writing this letter i'm putting out my thoughts in it and i want to um get this message to you and i'm going to burn it and it just kind of goes into the air and then you kind of feel better about it like you've resolved the issue and or um you know just feel better and it, it's released i have a feeling that this is pretty common when you when you're in the situation this the sitter is in but uh and if so if she's done a lot of these kinds of readings she would know that's pretty typical so it feels very specific but i'm not so sure it's specific as i'm saying the same with keeping something like she says it's not exactly a shrine but you are keeping some stuff and then he turns the camera and shows that on top of the dresser there's some items there again i'm not really sure that that's so unusual that if it's somebody that you love and you had a long-term relationship with and then something happens you break up and then they die and there's and you don't really get to resolve the end because it sounds like they were broken up at that point and um you know his family doesn't even include him in things um apparently this happened before it was legal to get married in california and that's been a few years now so it's 
been back a while. So possibly, I, I don't feel that that would be really all that unusual to have some sort of memento of your family or somebody very, very dearly loved close enough that you would see it on a, on a normal basis. Probably in the bed bedroom would make some kind of sense. The drag show, he didn't sound too excited about it. She's like, he was he into drag? And he's like, no. Oh. <laughs> you know, I see you guys going to a drag show. Okay. You know, he never really got into that, that, that answer at all. So I'm not real confident that there was a lot of there in this. I'm not confident there was any there there at all. So, okay, so let's sum up. And she's not going to be happy with this, obviously. And this is kind of what I told her. I didn't get into the specifics as I am with you right here on this video. And if you like this video, please let me know if you want to see more videos like this. Or um, if this really isn't your, your, your thing that you find interesting. But, um, or if you see something that I didn't. And like I said, I'm going to try to put the uh, the video in the in the um, description here, please um, let me know what you think. Okay, so first she gets this guy who she thought was she had longish hair, but it wasn't really long, but it got shorter. And then, you know, um, then here comes Ryan and Ryan has, she can't really describe him except saying, you know, he has big eyes and that he's quiet and he's outgoing. Um, he has amber and he has chocolate eyes and they're amber and they're brown and he's six foot to six and a half feet um we she thinks he's a ballerina or is involved in the dancing world or is in drama none of that's true uh she doesn't get that he's adopted either of these men are she doesn't get that they're both adopted and that the that ryan's mother was in a wheelchair she never mentions that there's no name mentioned at all no names at all she makes it sound like they're friends from high school or junior high school and something to do with drama class. We find out that this guy's eight years older than him and that he was a botanist, not anything to do with the acting community, dancing, anything of the sort, though he does move like a dancer. So there's that active, motivated, motivated listening. You hear what you want to hear and you try to make it fit because he very much wants this reading to be a hit he wants to have ryan come through so in my experience what happens when you badly want the reading to come through you really want it to hit you tend to make excuses and embellish and pull out things that are just marginally okay and just accept that that must oh that's right that's right yeah oh yeah I'm, yeah um she plays up the drama stuff again and it turns out that um they're not in drama class together they weren't in high school together or junior high and he wasn't his teacher he was a botanist and that at one point when the sitter was reading for fiddler on the roof and doing choreographic choreographing it that he was rehearsing lines so that's not quite the same thing she thinks that, um, that the sitter was afraid of the ocean and swimming. And he's like, no, I am a fish. I swim and I love to swim. The other guy, Ryan, was afraid of the ocean. So that was wrong. She, she completely missed that. She missed, um, um, you know, this, the, you know, he just embellished the donut story and the, going through the fish market story and, um again they talk about mom again and then there's a sibling who's not a sibling and it's kind of a sibling but not a sibling well who doesn't have somebody close to them that could be kind of like a a sibling you know no names mentioned doesn't even mention gender and then so the sitter goes in and says well you know i think it might be this foster sister who had kids that he wanted to kind of he wanted to be the father or figure for these children and we were thinking about adopting him I wonder if the mother liked that idea and then again about the mother and oh rose is mentioned but it might be a rose or it might be a name 
a physical rose or a name. I think those are very different things. They're both called rose, but a rose is mentioned. So is she hearing Ryan's voice? Is she hearing the word rose? Does she is she saying she's hearing him say rose? And then she's trying to figure out is that a, a flower or is it a is it a name? What is it? Or is he presenting a visual? That wouldn't make any sense at all because that would definitely be. So I guess she's hearing his voice, right? She's hearing the word rose. Okay. Daffodils, that's a good hit, I think. Um, she didn't catch that he was a botanist. Um, she doesn't catch that the house that the reading is being held in right now at this moment, he's sitting in and you can see it. Ryan doesn't notice that. He doesn't mention that he lived there for a while. And that's a little odd. Oh boy, what else? I'm trying to find what he hit on. He will not discuss his passing because she can't. And conveniently, Ryan doesn't want to talk about it. Mm. She, know, she, she had to ask him if they were married. The answer is no, but she had to ask him if they had been married. And she talks about a light. Uh, um, oh, she talks about sparkling lights and sparkling, sparkling. Where is it on here? She says there's just the two of you and there's sparkly lights at some kind of ceremony and sparkly drinks. And it turns out it's either they were sitting in a car with a light on in the car and they were talking about marriage or on their first date at a coffee house, um, Ryan proposes to the sitter and then they go out into downtown and there are lights in the trees because it's Christmas time and they take a selfie. That's not close at all, but that is a perfect example of how the sitter is trying to make things fit. Um, and, you know, going on about, I think there was a, the other thing about the death again. And he's like, oh, I don't want to, he said he had questions and she's like, no, he doesn't want to talk about that at all. And he's saying, oh, oh I missed this in here. Darn it. Sitter wants to talk about the death because sitter has questions. Um, the medium responds that Ryan is saying, don't tell me what to do. And then she pushes past and says that the sitter really wants to know and moves on to something about the history as of being history buffs. Well, like, okay. Um, they're both interested in history. And when he says, yeah, he was interested in the um the history of the um world fairs he was very interested into it he was into drawing the detailed you know um drawings of these state fairs and they're very unique and uh, incredible she doesn't know that she doesn't mention it she just says something about history and the sitter says yeah i'm adopted and i'm interested in my family history which in other words, she throws out something and then the sitter relates it. Oh, that's exactly right. I'm adopted and I'm looking at my family history. And he was loved of world fairs. He loved it. So these are things that she mentions and, and the sitter responds to with a personal story oversharing as he does throughout the whole sitting. Um... Then they talk about the drawings and how he can get them back. And Ryan apparently says that the woman would be open to giving the drawings back as a saying of as a mistake. And then the sitter is like, well, I don't know if I want to do that. Besides, I don't know who she is because she was in a consignment. And then Ryan doesn't tell him anything about how to get a hold of him. But apparently Ryan knows this woman well enough to know that she would be open to giving the readings, the, the drawings back. But yet, they don't know him. There's a wooden cutting board and they cook together, which is typical of people who are in a long-term relationship and they would cook together. 
and then you can tell that the sitter is in a lot of grief still he's got a lot of emotions and he's he's obviously needs some therapy and um probably not from a medium that's my point he probably should be getting help from an actual therapist so he can get on with this this sounds like it happened a long time ago you know maybe five or six years ago and when you're in a position where you're still grieving like this in my opinion i think that you, you might want to get some better therapy and instead of just trying to reach out to people who paying them to try to get you to give you answers when maybe there aren't good answers maybe you're not going to be able to get this answer because the person has died and there's ways of dealing with that grief and moving on uh, as we all have to right if you think that you can just pick up a phone or call a medium or something and get some sort of answer and it's vague and you have to make you have to make it fit and it feels like you might be getting an answer i don't know i you're an adult if he wants to do this kind of thing fine but don't tell me that you're getting a good reading that this was a good reading when I, I'm, I'm not seeing anything in here that's good at all so i'm sorry this is not a good reading. This is an example of cold reading that stretches out over 30 minutes. She's charming. She has a personality. She relates well to people. Um, she'd probably be doing really well at customer service or even sales. But this is not, this is not a good example of a if you're trying to impress me with a good reading, this ain't it. Because the sitter is so motivated to make the hits. The, he's just agreeing to just about everything so everything you say pretty much was like yes 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 and oh my gosh and i'm crying and stuff like that and so that's called a motivated listener he's listening for what he needs to to make it fit and then he overshares which is giving her a lot more information she can pull from later on and he's just kind of changing the story around to fit whatever she says. So I, I, he had another reading with her after. So I guess he really felt like he got something out of this. But if you're trying to present this as your, your best public reading, she says it's not the best because she's got some private readings that are even better. But it's pretty good, she says. Finally, she tells me it's pretty good. And um, this is, I, I don't know if mediums like this have convinced themselves that they're not cold reading. I can see it's cold reading. I think you guys out there watching this right now can tell that is cold reading. What do you think? I really would like to know. Please subscribe. I like doing these kinds of uh, videos. But I need to know what you guys think. Do you want me to do more like this? Do you want me to go back to the hot reading kind of videos that I've been doing where it shows exact? Cold reading is really kind of one of those things that's hard to interpret unless you've seen a lot of it, I guess. And it when you leave a cold reading, when you leave it, when you walk away from having had a cold reading done, it can feel very real. It can, it's very emotional. Things come at you fast. You're not really recording it. He's not taking notes. And it feels very real. So I think that in the case of these two people, I think they probably think they had a really good reading. But when you look at it later and you're able to evaluate it, like I am, I'm sitting here at my house, I can move the video fast and forward and nah, 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 back and forth and replay things over and over and make a lot of notes. To me, looking at it from that position, I'm getting a different feel for this. I'm, I, I'm seeing different things that they didn't see at that time. And it's not their fault because... They're having a conversation and things are remembered differently than actually they occurred. 
And what was most glaring obvious to me is all the misses she had. I mean, there were so many, you know, no names, um, you know, a rose, a name, a flower. I don't know what this is all about. He doesn't want to talk about the death. Um, you know, here comes somebody along. He's got longish hair and he's, we don't, you know, and then, you know, we go to this other person who could be really, really, really tall. And I don't know what color his eyes are. And there's no information given, not about adoptions, not about the mother's name, not about the death, not in um, a, a sibling. It's not a sibling that is no name giving. If you are in contact with somebody who is saying the word rose and you can hear the word rose, why can't he say his name? Why can't he say his mother's name? Why can't he give any details that would actually make this something that was that would feel more like she had an accurate hit? Because everything is just vague and and feels like it would fit a large percentage of people in the world. The fish market smelled really bad. No kidding. They miss California. No kidding. Anyway, I guess she's going to do a response video. So let's see what she has to say. I'm curious to see what she's going to say. I'm open to more information. I'm open to more evidence. But this isn't it. No hot reading done at all. Just making sure you know. That's all pure cold reading. And motivated listening. Thanks all.